Hey gear seekers, I'm Nick. B760 is finally here. So we have some, let's call it budget focus options for Intel's 13th gen CPUs. What we're doing today is taking a look at a brand new board from MSI. It's called the MAG B760 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. Yeah, let's do our usual motherboard thing, ladies and gents. But as usual with these motherboard videos, they are not reviews. They're just overviews so we can take a bit of a look at what's physically on the board and what comes in the box with a brand new board like this. And spoiler alert, there is not a whole lot that comes with this board. And I've got to say this right at the start, I don't know about availability or pricing. So if you're watching to see that, I just don't know at this point in time. These boards are rocked up. Intel announced some new CPUs and I saw a bunch of videos about these motherboards going out. Let's jump in. All right, ladies and gents, here it is. The MSI MAG B760 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. Let's do our usual thing. Let's get the motherboard out of the way so we can take a bit of a closer look at everything that comes in the box of the brand new motherboard. First up, we've got the quick installation guide. This does what's advertised. It helps you install things nice and quickly. There's also a set of Wi-Fi antennas for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E. We've also got a single SATA or SATA cable for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. There's also the European Union regulatory notices. I uh, don't know why this is in my motherboard. I'm in Australia, not in the European Union. Anyway, there's also a spare M.2 clip in case you break them because these can break, so it is nice that there's a spare one, as well as this sheet of stickers that you can use to label all of your cables and all your jazz, and that's basically it. So let's unsheath the B760 Tomahawk Wi-Fi and take a bit of a look at everything that is on the board. You guys ready to jump in? Let's take a closer look. First up, we've got the front panel audio header. There's a 4-pin 12-volt RGB header, a 3-pin 5-volt addressable RGB header, two PWM fan headers, as well as two USB 2.0 headers for things like liquid coolers, RGB controllers, and all that jazz, a Thunderbolt header in case you have a Thunderbolt add-in card, and the front panel header for all your lights and all your switches to let you know your system is up and running. There's also a TPM header, four SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5-inch SSDs or those spinning rust drives. Further up the board, there's a USB Type-C front panel connector, a USB 3.2 front panel header. There's also the 24 pin power connector to send juice to your brand new motherboard, a diagnostic postcode LED array so you can diagnose your system when you're booting up, and two PWM fan headers as well. On the top right hand side of the board, there's two more RGB headers, two PWM fan headers, and if we scoot to the top left of the board, there's two 8-pin EPS power connectors to send juice to either your 12th or 13th gen Intel CPU. There's also another PWM fan header above the top M.2 slot. For the PCIe layout on this board, it's pretty straightforward. We've got a single PCIe Gen 5x16 slot, a PCIe Gen 3x4 slot, and a PCIe Gen 4x1 slot. This board features a 12 plus one phase duet rail VRM layout with 75 amp power stages. And you can see that the whole IO cover is a heatsink for the VRM, as well as that giant heatsink at the top of the board as well. Now, this board features Intel's LGA1700 socket. It's got standard LGA1700 cooler mounting. If we pop that socket open, you can take a look at what it looks like inside the socket in case you've never ever seen that before. And on top of that, if we flip the board over, you can see that there's not a whole lot going on back here. I show this because a lot of people want to see what this looks like. For RAM, this supports up to four DDR5 RAM modules, up to 128 gigs in total at 7,000 mega transfers overclocked. So quite capable RAM configuration here. All right, let's pop open these M.2 slots. I actually found the screws closest to me were very hard to come undone. I sped this up so you didn't have to wait too long. There's three PCIe Gen 4 M.2 slots on this board in total. There's one just underneath the CPU socket and there's two more M.2 slots towards the bottom of the board as well. And much like other MSI boards that we've seen for the last two or so years, they all include these integrated clips for attaching your M.2 drives. For rear I.O., we've got a bunch of USB Type-A ports. We've got DisplayPort, HDMI, 
some USB 3.2 ports, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, USB Type-C, the antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 6E, and the audio interface with optical and SPDIF out with 7.1 digital surround sound and an integrated IO shield. Ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this first look and overview of this brand new board from MSI, the MAG B760 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. Wow, it's getting really hard to pronounce all these motherboard names. They're just really confusing with all the numbers and all the things all the time. Anyway, as I mentioned in the intro, pricing and availability, we've got absolutely no idea when these are coming out, what the pricing is, but what I usually do is I update the description and the pin comment when we get some pricing and stuff. So you can check that out if you're watching this in like six months time and you wanna know about the pricing. But if I had to speculate, I would say that a board like this would probably go for around 189 US dollars. Given what we saw with B660, I feel like this board is almost the same as its B660 counterpart. So in terms of features with this new chipset, they basically just need to release a new chipset with every single processor generation. If they didn't, people would get upset that they wouldn't be able to use their boards without updating the BIOS. That's really the point of these boards here because Intel announced all their new 65 watt parts and all their intermediate SKUs, so between all the top end stuff and all the lower end stuff and whatnot. So they really need to refresh stuff so people don't need to go fumbling around with USB sticks and updating BIOSes and whatnot. But if I'm being honest, you could still buy a B660 board update the BIOS and use 13th gen CPUs anyway. But yeah, this is just for people who are either building new or this is not really for people who are upgrading if I'm being absolutely honest. Anyways guys, if you enjoy our motherboard content, do us a big old favor. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button right down there, down below. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm Unique. I'm your Nick boy. <laughs> With gear seek, it's, it's, yeah. Yep, you peak, we seek, and all that jazz. And yeah, let us know what you think of B760. Man, it's getting confusing. Everything just sounds the same these days. When are we getting something that's going to be exciting? <laughs>